What's up Yarny Box Crocheters? Today I have a super fun tutorial for you. It's Finn the Iguana. I would rate this tutorial as an advanced beginner, so if you know the basics of crochet, grab your hook, grab some yarn, and let's get started. I'm going to be using a weight 6 yarn with a 5.5mm hook, but you can use any yarn as long as your hook size is about two sizes smaller than the yarn calls for. We're going to start off by putting six single crochets in a magic ring. Pull the ring tight, and now round two is six increases. If you'd like to keep track of your work and not count, just like I like to do, uh, go ahead and put your stitch marker in. I like to put mine on the last stitch of the round, but you can also do the first stitch of the round, whichever you prefer. Just make sure you're consistent the whole way through. Round three, we're starting off with four single crochets. And then we're gonna do four increases. and four and then four single crochets to get us back to the stitch marker and that's going to give us 16 stitches don't forget to move your stitch marker And round four is starting out with six single crochets. And now we're gonna do four increases. And I'm just gonna speed up this bit. And once you've done the four increases, do six single crochets to get us back to the stitch marker. Take out your stitch marker, and you can see that we've got a nice little nose forming. And start off round five with six single crochets. And it appears I have a case of reptile dysfunction, missing the hole there. <laughs> And now we're going to do eight increases and then six single crochets to get back to the stitch mark. And as you can see, the increases make a nice face shape for an iguana here. Don't forget to move your stitch marker. And for the next five rounds, rounds six to ten, we're going to be doing 28 single crochets. So just keep trucking along and I will speed up this portion and meet you back after you've done five rounds.
Now it's time to put in the safety eyes. So count about three to five stitches away from the nose, which is the magic ring. This is really gonna depend on the yarn and the tension that you have. Uh, so everyone's might be a little bit different, but pop them in and see how you like it. And just make sure they're centered with the stitch marker because you don't want a lopsided fin. So you can kind of stretch out the forehead and make sure that everything is nice and even and centered before you put the washers on. Round 11 is five single crochet and a decrease. You're gonna do that four times and end up with 24 stitches. Don't forget to move your stitch marker to the next round. And round 12 is two single crochets and a decrease. Repeat that six times and you're going to end up with 18 stitches. Here we have another case of reptile dysfunction where I can't seem to find the hole. So take a shot every time that happens during this tutorial. Round 13 is four single crochet decrease three times for a total of 15 stitches. Move your stitch marker and row 14 is a single crochet and an increase. You're gonna do that seven times and then there is one extra single crochet at the end of this round. You're gonna end up with a total of 22 stitches. Once you've moved your stitch marker, you can start stuffing Finn's head. And the stuffing plays a really important role in this pattern. You really have to shape out his nose and his forehead and later on his back. The increases form a lot of the shape of the iguana, so make sure you're really putting the stuffing where the increases are. This next round is 12 single crochet, eight increases, and two single crochet. You're gonna end up with 30 stitches in this round. And this round is the first round of the back. Move your stitch marker. And this round is 16 single crochet, six increases, eight single crochet. The end of this round will give us 36 stitches. So we're all done with the increasing of the back and now for the next six rounds we're going to be doing 36 single crochets. I'm going to speed up this part and meet you back after you've done six rounds.
Row 23 is four single crochet decrease. You're gonna do that six times and you're gonna have 30 stitches at the end of this round. So move your stitch marker, and then for the next two rounds, it's going to be 30 single crochet around. So I'm gonna speed it up, and I'll meet you back here after you've done two rounds. Round 26 is three single crochet decrease. You're gonna do that six times and you're gonna end up with 24 stitches. I'm gonna speed up this bit and I'll meet you back here after. Round 27 is 24 single crochets around. Now it's time to start stuffing Finn's body, so make sure you stuff his neck really well because nobody likes a floppy neck, and make sure you put a lot of stuffing in the back and really shape out the increase area. Now that Finn is looking like a peanut, we are almost done. We just have the tail to do. So the next round is two single crochet decrease six times for a total of 18 stitches. Rounds 29 to 32 are four rounds of 18 single crochets, so I will speed it up and meet you back here when you're done. So from now on, we're just gonna be stuffing as we go. So just make sure you shape out between the body and the tail just so that there's not some weird bump. And don't put too much stuffing where you can see it through the holes, but just do as much as you think is necessary. 
Round 33 is one single crochet decrease. Do that six times and you're gonna end up with 12 stitches at the end. Rounds 34 to 40 is going to be 7 rounds of 12 single crochets. Unfortunately my camera battery died so I couldn't get the first few rounds on camera, but uh, just do 7 rounds of 12 single crochets and I'll meet you back here when I'm done that. Okay, and now once you've moved your stitch marker, I'm just going to add a bit more stuffing to the tail. Row 41 is two single crochet decrease. Do that three times and you're going to have nine single crochets at the end. I'm just going to add a little bit more stuffing here and for the next nine rounds, rounds 42 to 50, we're just going to be doing nine single crochets per round. Uh, so I'm going to do these rounds off camera just because it's a little bit awkward of a camera angle now that the iguana is getting so long. So I'm going to meet you back here. Once you've done nine rounds, I will tell you the next step. Now that our iguana is looking heckin' long, we are going to be doing rounds 51. Round 51 is one single crochet decrease. You're gonna do that twice and you will get a total of six stitches. For the last three rounds of the iguana, we're going to be doing six single crochets. So I'm going to speed up this part and I'll meet you back once you have three rounds of six. Time to fasten off the iguana body, so cut your tail and pull it through. And you can add a little bit more stuffing here if you'd like. And now we can thread our yarn needle and close off the hole. And don't forget to weave in your ends really well.
Now that we're done the iguana body, we can do the legs. So in a magic ring, we're going to do five toe stitches. And a toe stitch starts off with a single crochet and then chain four. Starting in the second chain from the hook, slip stitch your way down the chain for a total of three slip stitches. That's a toe stitch. So again, single crochet, chain four. Starting in the second chain from the hook, slip stitch three times. That's the second toe stitch. So single crochet, chain four, slip stitch three down the chain. And now I'm just speeding it up. Do a total of five toe stitches. And then you're gonna finish off with one regular single crochet in the magic ring. And that will give us a total of six stitches. So close the magic ring, and I like to just end it by slip stitching into the first single crochet that we did. And that gives us a nice little foot with five toes. When you turn it over, you can see in the back of each of our toe stitches, there's a little hump. And that little hump is where we're going to put our single crochets in the next round. If you just kind of press on the, each toe stitch, they just kind of pop out. So single crochet in each of those little posts. One, two, three, four, and five. And then you can do a regular single crochet in that single crochet that we made. And then you can see that kind of creates like a little ridge. So there is the foot and then there is the leg that kind of comes out from the foot. So I like to cut the tail of the foot just to, so that I can stuff it back in the little leg area and then it doesn't get in my way while I'm working. Um, you can weave in that end if you'd like or you can just kind of jam it in there. Blanket yarn is super sticky, so I'm not too worried about the end coming out, but if you're working with worsted weight yarn, I would probably weave in that end. And then round three is a single crochet increase three times, and you're gonna end up with nine single crochets at the end. For the next six rounds, you're gonna be doing nine single crochets. So I'm going to speed it up and I'll meet you back here once you've done six rounds. You can either stuff the leg as you go or you can stuff it at the end. It's just kind of your preference. I prefer to stuff it at the end when I'm done the six rounds, so that's what I'm gonna do.
Once your leg is stuffed, you are going to do round 10, which is one single crochet decrease three times for a total of six stitches. This is our last round of the leg. To close off the leg, you're going to fold it in half and do three single crochets across both sides so that it closes the entire leg. So that's one, two, and three. So make sure you're going across both sides to make sure that the leg is totally shut. And then you can cut the end and pull it through. Now we're going to make the dewlap and the spikes. So grab your secondary color and chain 10. Now starting in the second chain from the hook, you're going to place a single crochet and then a half double crochet in the next stitch and a half double crochet in the next and then a double crochet, another double crochet, another double crochet and then the last three stitches are each a treble or triple crochet. If you've never done a triple crochet, it's almost the same thing as a double, except you're yarning over twice before you insert your hook. And then you're pulling through two loops three different times on your hook to get the stitch completed instead of just twice, like a double crochet. I like to finish the dewlap piece by slip stitching into the first chain that we did. It just makes it easier to sew it on later, but you don't have to do that. Next to do the spike piece, we're going to chain 40. In the second chain from your hook, place a double crochet. Chain two. And then slip stitch into the same stitch. Slip stitch into the next stitch. In the next stitch, single crochet, chain one double crochet in the next stitch, chain two, slip stitch into the same stitch, and then in the next stitch, slip stitch. You're going to repeat that sequence over again. So single crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next stitch, chain two, slip stitch in the same stitch and then slip stitch in the next stitch. Single crochet, chain one. Double crochet, chain two. Slip stitch in the same stitch, slip stitch to the next stitch. Repeat that all the way down the chain.
Now you have all of the pieces completed for your iguana, so now it is time to sew them all together. I like to secure the spike piece on my iguana with some bobby pins. I find that the easiest method to keep it straight while I'm trying to sew it on. You could use sewing pins or you could use U-shaped pins. I just find bobby pins are really easy because I have them around the house already, but you can use whatever method you'd like. So here I'm just centering the spike piece on. I like to do it just behind the eyes on the head and then it should reach a little bit onto the tail, but not all the way down the tail. Your spike piece should look something like that, and then once it's all pinned on, you can start sewing. So I just take a stitch from the body and then the first stitch from the spike, and I just do that all the way down. Just make sure you're being centered the whole way down, and just go slow and take your time. As you can see here, I was not about to play yarn chicken with that little end, so I just grabbed another piece of the blue and attached it on to finish sewing the rest of the way. Once you reach the end of the tail, just make sure the last little bit is sewed on really well. And weave in your ends, it should look something like this. Next you're going to take the dewlap piece and take the thicker part and put it towards the neck. I attach mine just like the spike piece, I bobby pin it on and then I just sew it on. And now it's time for the legs. You can see here that there's a little side where there's no toe. That side is going to go towards the tail. And I'm just bobby pinning them on so that I can make sure they are placed exactly like I want. I put the first leg about two to three stitches back from the neck, and then the second leg is about four or five stitches back from the first leg. And stand them up, make sure the legs are where you want them. I like to sew them on about a third of the way up the body. Once you've got the first two legs stitched on, do the exact same thing on the other side, just make sure everything is symmetrical before you sew it on. And there you have your very own Fin the Iguana. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Iguana be your friend, so head to yarnybox.com and sign up with your email to get a free pattern delivered to your inbox every two weeks. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye!